presence of the Lord. a reminder to your friends and family tonight is a night when you call upon God we don't have a specific thing but you are going to determine whatever it is you want to call on him for it's a night that when we call he will answer are we there let's read one to go I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised so shall I be saved from let's read it like soldiers one more time one to go I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised so shall I be saved from my enemies Jeremiah 33 verse 3 are we all there let's read one to go call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. One more time. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things. Are you ready to call? Are you ready to proclaim his name? To address him by name? That's what that word means. Beautiful say, beautiful force.
it a place, as it is a place. Lift up your voice and praise him. says call upon him it means address him by name call him by his name like Jesus thou son of David like Yahweh Sabaoth the God of heaven's armies when you call upon him you call him by his name you address him by his name
Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. studying that scripture Jeremiah 33 verse 3 one of the meanings of that call is to address by name say address by name so when blind Bartimaeus called he didn't just say this man help me he said Jesus thou son of David amen before we bring the woman of God we are going to call out call it with with conviction Yahweh Sabaoth is the God that breaks out the God of heaven's armies visible and invisible the Lord of hosts is Lord strong and mighty just picture yourself calling him and he's right in front of you are you ready
glory again and be ye lifted up the everlasting doors let the king of glory come in who is his king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle lift up your heads so you get even lift them up the everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is this king of glory the lord adonai yahweh sabaoth he is the king of glory welcome him say we welcome you we welcome you we welcome you have your way have your way in jesus mighty name are you ready to we've called upon him in praise we've sent judah ahead are you ready to call out to him like jabez oh that thou wouldest bless me Tonight I have someone special to me. One of the people who have really invested so much in my life, you know, spiritually over the years. I'm not someone who just emerged from the blues. I'm a product of many graces. You know, I'm blessed by the blessing of men and women. A woman of prayer and this is not even about patronizing her and just trying to you know share a platform it's because she carries something but we i decided not to place a theme on it so that whatever it is you want to call upon i mean and however the lord leads her so for the next you know minutes that she's here open up your spirit there's a spirit of supplication that she carries and i pray that you know that that will be imparted to you. Welcome with me, Pastor Benigo Omayuku. Celebrate a woman of God, a blessing. I honor you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Nat. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, the team. Um, we will look in the word of God before we go there. Let's bring out what is inside us. I want you to dig deep into your spirit and bring it out. Let's just pray in the spirit as we prepare ourselves. <laughs> Bring it out, bring it out. You didn't come here to play. Bring it out. Yeah, Ragadwa, 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 
because time is limited. Please, somebody watch the time for me. Let me know when it's 20 minutes so I know I have five more minutes. So, I have a little note here where it says to call. Just check the English word. To call. It says it's to cry or make some summon, you know. A cry that is made as a summon to attract attention. It's a, call, it's a cry that is very deliberate. There's intention. It's, it's not just noise. It's, it's a cry that is made deliberately. There's intention. The intention is to attract attention. It's a sound that calls attention, calls for attention. Now God from heaven says to us, call upon me. Make that sound that will attract my attention. He says, make the sound. This is God speaking to us and it's all over scriptures. There are many scriptures. We just looked at Psalm 18. There's Psalm 29. Uh, sorry, there's Jeremiah 29. There's Jeremiah 33. There's Psalm 50. You know, in different scriptures, God says, call upon me. In fact, he goes so fast to say in Romans 10 verse 13, he says, look, if you anyone whosoever anyone that calls upon him he says he will do what he will save them suggesting therefore that he will respond that be he will respond it's just that if you are so far away he will begin the process of bringing you close to him but god's desire is always to respond to a call yes he wants to respond in fact he's so desperate to respond that the bible says he is near them that call upon him. He's near them that call upon him. For small things, call upon him. For big things, call upon him. He wants you to call upon him. It's an invitation from heaven that you should cry out. So never feel bad when you are calling out. Don't let anyone tell you that you are calling too much or you are making too much noise. He wants you to call on him. You, and you know why? That call is an invitation for him to enter into the situation. You know how God is not a thief. He's not the robber. In The Bible discusses that in John 10. He says he's the shepherd of the sheep. The Bible says the shepherd of the sheep will do what he will come in legitimately. So God wants to assist us with every situation. That's why he says, call upon me. He wants to be invited into the situation, every situation to the extent where in Luke 18, he says to us, he says, he told them a story. Why? That men ought always to pray, pray. which is to say men ought always to call on upon him. Don't let anybody stop you. Until you get to always, then you say, okay, have, have you read always? Uh, no, once you haven't read always, you are not ready yet to stop. So keep calling until you get to always. He wants you to always call him. He wants you to always call him. Please come with me on a journey to Mark 6. This is a story we all know. We'll look very quickly at the story. We have to rush because of time. Mark 6, please put it on the screen for me. The New Living Translation. Mark 6. Yeah, am I in Mark? No, sorry. Is that story from, yeah. Mark. Mark 6, yes. 40. How, why do I keep going back? <laughs> You see, this is why I bring my Bible along. Go, you say, why do you have your Bible and your iPad? This iPad, these things. I'm just trying to be funky. Uh, I'm trying to be cool, but my Bible is here. <laughs> okay, the Bible says from verse 45. After Jesus had done this wonderful miracle, please put New Living. Oh, you, it's up there already. New Living Translation. I like to read this story there. For, from the New Living Translation. After Jesus had done this thing, the Bible says this miracle, bread, fish, everything, they ate it. 
Then Jesus said to his disciples, he says, the Bible says from 45, he says, immediately after this, Jesus insisted, pay attention you know, so that you respond. How you people are prophetic people. Everybody joining at, at this point. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> at this point, now I'm sure everybody joining, it has become prophetic. He says, immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and head across the lake to Bethsaida while he sent the people home. After telling everyone goodbye, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Late that night, everybody say late that night. Late that night. Say it again. Late that night. Late that night. As the disciples were in their boat in the middle of the lake and Jesus was alone on land, he saw that they were in serious Woo. trouble. Late <laughs> that night, say that again. Late, Late that, that night. night. Night seasons. The devil wants to act like as if he's in charge in night seasons. But no, it's not true. Who is in charge of every season? Jesus. It's Jesus. He's in charge of every season. What he doesn't know is that the Bible says God has hidden treasures in darkness. He talks, the Bible talks about the riches of darkness. There are things you get only in night seasons in your life. There are experiences you get in night seasons that will keep you and help you maintain focus as you go along into greater times. Morning must do what? Morning, morning must do what? Must I told you, follow me closely. Thank you. Morning must come. come. Morning for many people has come now. Amen. The morning has come now. Amen. Them. The morning has come now. Amen. You will enter it in the name of Jesus. Amen. So he says, late that night, the devil didn't know. God is still in control. Oh, he knows, but he, but he knows that when Christians, when people don't know things, the devil toys with them. But Jesus is still in charge. Whether it's night and day, is as light before him. That's what the Bible says. So the Bible says these people, they were in the boat in the middle of the lake, and Jesus was alone. Then Jesus saw that they were serious. They were not in small trouble. What kind of trouble? Serious trouble. What kind of trouble? Serious trouble. Is there anyone here who is in trouble hmm. that is so serious Jesus cannot deal with? No. I ah, know now. So there's no trouble whether you are online or you are Papa, here physically. Yeah, there's no me. trouble that is too serious for Hallelujah. Jesus. The Bible says they were in serious trouble. He saw them Shabbat. rowing hard and struggling, struggling. against the wind Ooh. and waves. They were rowing hard <laughs> and struggling against... There are many people that think they've been struggling. You know, when you are struggling against the wind, you are rowing. The King James calls it, they were, he says, they were toiling in rowing. No, now you row. We have to work hard as Christians. But when you are toiling, it's another level. You are working hard and not going forward. That mm. is not God's plan. They were toiling in rowing. The wind was against them. Who is the prince of the power of the air? He was busy doing his own thing, what he does. He just gets busy trying to stop believers from going for, from enforcing the victory that's already been won for them. He's a believer that does not know that stops there. Tonight, tonight, tonight. the one tonight, tonight, the person that didn't know will know. Amen. And they will go forward in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, you will row, you will not toil in rowing in the Amen. name of Jesus. Yes. The Bible says about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on the water. The Bible says he intended to go past them. <laughs> it's not because he wanted to. Yay. Because he, I believe that one of the reasons he came at the time was because he had seen them yes. in serious trouble. However. So he came, but he couldn't do anything until they did what? Uh -huh. Until they did what? That's what we are going to do tonight. You will have to call out to him. You are empowered to call out. You have the right to call out. You are anointed to call out. The one you are calling on to wants to hear you. So the Bible says he wanted to go past them. They didn't call. But when they saw him walking on the water, they cried out in, ter in terror, thinking he was a ghost. You know what I think? I think Jesus wanted to help them. He knew that these people, the way they are going, you know that's how we are. You think, ah, this is my work. I know how to do it now. So you'll be struggling some more. You are trying to fix it. Meanwhile, there's Jesus that says, just call me. 
If it looks tough, call me. If it's easy, call me. I'm there. But they, you know, it's something they did normally was their means of transport. So when the wind was against them, they were doing what they were trying to fix it. So that's how we try many times. But there's Jesus waiting for you to call on him. So what did Jesus do to help them? The Bible says they thought he was a ghost. You know when they cried out, the Bible doesn't say they cried out because they wanted his help. He said they cried out because they thought they saw a ghost. That was God helping them. The important thing was that they, they cried, cried out. out. The important thing was that they called out. How many people feel the need to cry out this evening? Before we go on, I want you to lift up your voices wherever you are. I don't know what it is. Whether you are in serious trouble or you are not in, you are in small trouble, call out. It doesn't matter how you measure it. You are not the measure of the trouble. You are not the measure. Call out to him. Jesus, the son of David, help me, 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 Jesus, 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 oh yes, amen, 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 amen. We are on the way, we are on the way. Amen. You know our time. So because of time, we have to be very conscious of time. So the Bible says, and I want you to know that it was Jesus that told them to go across. So, so you know, many times you say, because it's the Lord that told me, nothing will happen. You know, sometimes when Christians meet issues on the way, if the wind just blows, they'll say, ah, no, this one, how did the Lord allow the wind? No, the wind blows. That's it. Uh, yes. You will, whether, yes. You will just have to go forward despite that. And how will you go forward? You will invite Jesus. He will help you. Why? Why does God want you to call on him? Why? Ask yourself. Why? God knows that he knows who he made. He understands where you are at in relation to life. He knows how equipped you are to deal with life. He says you need me. It's just that I will not come illegitimately because I'm not a thief. So you call me. Now, so he wants to help us so that it will be said concerning us. That's what I always ask God, that you are marvelously helped. Yes, there's nothing wrong with him helping. He listens when you call him. He, you know, the God that's asking you to call him, to invite him, he knows all things. He's a very wise God. In fact, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 2 that wisdom flows from him. It resides in him and then it flows from him. He knows everything. Even darkness is as light before him. There's nothing that is hidden from him. So he can help you in that situation. Moreover, our power belongs to whom? It belongs to him. And you know another thing I love about this God? He's a master strategist. He's a master. You know, at one time, he told them he fought for Israel. He said, go and fight, but he fought for them. Hailstones falling, killing people. At another time, another group of soldiers, they saw water, they thought it was blood. At another time, he said, this is what you do now. You are going to defeat them. You just send out some people at the back. You people have another group in front. Let them think that they are defeating you as you are. I mean, he's a master strategist. And those, that's what he does with our life. He gives us different, different um, um, strategies. And you know, you think about it. The only thing that comes to my head this. I never see any God like this. I never see any God like this. Don't sing God because we don't have time. But <laughs> that's the truth. I never see any God like this. He fights, he, he responds to situations in ways you would never imagine. How does he just say, okay, you know what, dig trenches. I don't I, the dig trenches, you begin to dig, and then water just flows in it. And the same water, he uses it to wreck the enemy. I mean, he's amazing, and he so don't ever try to figure out how he's going to help you. No, don't ever try to figure figure it out. I know. So he tells the God that tells you to call him, he's an all-knowing God. 
He's a master strategist. I want you to know why it's a good idea to call him. Beyond that, he's in charge. He rules in the affairs of man and in the world of the spirit. He's the master. He rules. He's the God of all spirits. All the spirits of all flesh, apart from him being the God of all flesh. And from where he sits on high, the Bible says when he rises, as he's getting up, his enemies are scattering. That's just it. They don't even want him to rise, you know, completely. So this is the God that is calling you. And you know, he knows also that he knows that though we are humans, that the spiritual is more real than the physical. He knows that any battle you lose in the spirit, you've lost it in the physical. So if you want to enforce the victory of Christ, you need to get in the spirit and pick something. Uh, please put 2 Corinthians 10 for us from verse 5. Use the New Living Translation again. So he knows, and that's one of the tricks of the enemy. If you have situations, he wants you to, you know, deal on the flesh level. So he will send someone to taunt you, to annoy you, you, you get into the flesh. It's, it's the easiest way for you to lose the battle. You know, because you are ill-equipped to function there. So, no, please, okay, did I say five? Go, three, start from three, please. Three. It says we are what? Please, everyone, wherever you are, let's read the scripture together. We'll read three and four, just three and four. Wherever you are, pick up your Bible, turn to New Living Translation if you have it on, and let's proclaim it together. It says, let's do this. One to go. We are, we are humans, human, but, but we, we don't, don't wage war as humans do. We, we use God's, God's mighty weapons, weapons not worldly weapons. weapons. To knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. So that's the thing. So when God tells you to call upon him, he knows how to bring you. You enter into the spirit because God is a spirit. And then your equipping is in the realm of the spirit. That's where you are strong. That's why the devil's trick is to bring you out. If you go to Ephesians 6 and you look at the weapons of your warfare, you find that if you look at it in its fullness, it's, it's Christ you are putting on. It's all spiritual. So that's where it's not something that happens physically. You enforce it. You, the battle is won in the spirit and then there's manifestation in the physical. So no matter what the battle is, if it is a battle of the mind, it is done where? So if it's that, oh, this person is depressed, the person is, where do you fight that battle? If it is one of the body, where do you fight it? If it is um, that someone is, you are just not doing well, you is, is it not physical, where do you fight it? Yes, it's always in the spirit. So you call upon God and he will help, he will help you. So that's how many more minutes you have, it's only six. This is not good at all. Okay, so we will stop here now because we have things to discuss. So let's get into prayer. <laughs> Focus, you are going to call on to God right now. In if you like in your language, if you like in the spirit, if you like in your understanding, look, you've been praying. The Bible tells us in Joshua 17, it says that Joshua was distributing land, they had finished all the victories. You know, like now, some people say, Ah, by Sunday, it's all over. Then you come again and start from where you stopped. This one, no, 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 that's not God's plan. The Bible says the children of Israel, Joshua was distributing the land, they had won enough. It was time he was about to go, so he was distributing. Then the children of Manasseh came to him, they said, Ah, you know, uh, something wanting happened, they didn't 
they didn't do much about their land. Okay, they didn't complain, but they didn't do much to take their entire land. They lived with some of the Canaanites. But the children of Joseph, they came to him. They started complaining. I'm not reading it because it's toward the end. You can put it up. He says, no, go and scroll down to the children of Joseph. The, the children of Joseph, they came to him. They said, give us a whole lot of land. He said, ah, you want more land? I give you, give them. They say, you know, that land you gave us, eh? the land, there's too many trees there. What still? There are people that they have chariots of iron. So give us another one. We can't take it. You see, that's how some of us are. We don't even recognize. Because of chariots of iron, we lose the answers to our prayer. All the things you've been praying since. Imagine how they've been fighting before they got to the point where Joshua was distributing. So they were about to lose their inheritance. Joshua had to tell them, he said, no, you, if you want land, he said, you will go back and fight. I don't care whether those people have chariots of iron or they do not have. You will take what is yours and be established. Do you know that in chapter 18, these people that were complaining that they saw chariots of iron, they actually took the land and they stayed there. So God knew they were empowered to now want you to enter into the spirit and establish everything you have been praying. You must take your land. You must take your land. Hey, you must take your land. Nobody else can do it for you. Nobody else can do it for you. You will take your land. Makarabado Saka. Mikaila Duasai Katwara. In Kapara Katosia. Ye Kapara Katosiala. In Kaporia. Rekakara Kudemo. In Kaparia Lagados. Mambregade Suaria Katosa. If you have to close your eyes, close them. If you have to close your eyes, close them. You must take your portion. Ye Kapara Katos. Ye Kaprantoria Rakatia. In Kapratosia. Rekatakaria. Mamprakusa Italia. Mambragade Sierra Kataka. Rekataka Lebrogodos. Mamprakusia Rakatos. In Kapratasiala. Ruka Patahaya. Yakua. In Kaprokosia. Yakila Prakatuasai. Mamprotosiara Bados. Yeah, la pronto sierra gadosha. Ye capro cotua. Ye quanta capasu. Ye capra catole. Ria casuara gados. Mambraga de saria cocacata. Ye capra tosia. Mambraga de gasoria. Mucatuara gadosha. Mambra tuasia. Ara quatia rat. Mila tuaca haya. You've been praying for too long. You must take your portion. Ye kapro takai, mi karua gada bos, man broga daga zori ya kapora. Ye kapa para katua sai, ye kapra zori ya, mi la kuwa katari ya. Ah, ye ukuwa da bos, man broga dia zori ya, ye kuwa raga da bos, mi karaba da haya, da hovari ya paruke, le broga dua zai. Every one of them.
one prayer point. I think I have just about a minute left. So, we have to pray also because we must be discerning. You know, the Bible tells us in Joshua 9 that as the people, as Joshua and the Israelites were going forward conquering, it says the Gibeonites, they had heard the story. They came, they pretended to be far away just to ensure that the children of Israel, you know, they looked like they needed help, but they were also making them not a three. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that they were, often, they were ensuring that they didn't fulfill their destiny because God had said they should take all the land. So very quickly, they went, they pretended to be another set of people. Then they went to meet them. They said, we are close to you. So Israel, and then so they entered into a relationship with them, some form of contract. They entered, they could never really destroy them. Why? At that point, they had fought so many battles. They were just kind of weary. They, they were relaxed, you know. But that's not us. We should be discerning. We should be, di I'm not talking about the gift of discerning. I'm talking about being discerning. You have to be sensitive. You have to be sensitive to know what to do. Again, there's another person in the Bible. You know, Caesar, the king that um, Deborah and, um, and the other, I've forgotten his name now, they wanted to destroy. He now, he ran into the hands of Jael. He said, we are family friends, so she will help me. But it was, um, it was a good thing for Israel, but he was not discerning. So I want you to take one prayer point. God, I need wisdom. Wisdom, please. The Bible says if you need it, ask him. Ask him. Ask him. Ask him. You want to be discerning. You want to be discerning. You want to be discerning. Ah. You know what to do. You want it. Yes, yes, yes. I receive wisdom. We receive it. We receive it. You know what to do. We receive it. I receive it. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus, I want us to, wherever you are, please pray for your nation. The whole world just seems like it's going crazy. We know that we are in the end times. But we want to pray for everyone, especially in an, I'm heavily burdened. I can't live here without praying for my nation. Who is the one who will call on if the problem looks small? If it is big, Jesus. if it's about our nation, Jesus. I want you to lift up your voices. All manner of prayer. All manner of prayer. Anyhow, you feel led to pray for your nation. Manto Korea Ragados. Yes, my nation, oh God. Manto Korea Ragados, I call it. Marika Papa Ruaga del God. Oh, Lord, we are tired of all this. extension i also ask you to pray for your nation because i know there are people from all around the world but our nation is in dire need of direction it is clear it is obvious that our leaders need help i mean look at the naira who would have thought 
that in Naira will be almost 2,000. That's why the Bible says to pray for your leader so that you may lead peaceable lives. Can we pray for wisdom? Wisdom. That same one we ask, wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to know what to do. For everyone in leadership in Nigeria, wisdom. Leadership in, in governance in the nations of the earth. Father, we ask for wisdom. We ask for wisdom. We ask for wisdom. For wisdom. For policy makers. Wisdom. Wisdom. Father, it is clear they are confused. Sometimes they really mean well, but they don't know what to do. The spirit of error has taken over. Send forth your truth. 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 Send forth your light. Send forth truth. In Jesus' mighty name. Please, let's go to, before we pray again, stretch forth your hands towards this woman of God. What a grace. Stretch forth your hands. Did you see that? That Mark 6, I was almost jumping. I was almost jumping. Stretch forth your hands. And release more grace, mega grace. James 4, 6, the Bible says, He giveth more grace. He giveth mega grace, exceeding grace. Release mega grace over this one. Mega grace. New level, new status, new ranking. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, please honor your daughter. Because she has honored you and honored us and watered us here. Water her. Amen. I ask for more grace. Amen. Exceeding grace. Amen. Mega grace. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, you know I've always said this. I believe in honor. Hallelujah challenges an altar of honor. I do not joke with issues of honoring people who come here to dispense grace to us. So we will honor her. And we will also put up with her permission, her details, because the reason why I do that is because every now and then, people, you know, disturb us. How can we bless the people? How can we? And the, the demand is always too much. So we, we do that. We organize that in a way that you can go to the website, you know, and you can be a blessing to them directly. Because as you do that, so some, some level of grace is released again. Because God loves it when we honor his servants. Amen. So we're going to do that. But we're going to pray one prayer. Isaiah 1 26. When I came in here, when we came in here just preparing and we we'll normally pray before we come on air, I heard the word rule of law. Rule of law. And I perceived in my heart that we should pray for our judiciary. Judiciary. And I know I have a justice here in this place who is a member of the team. So we we'll use that as a point of contact. That God will restore. I don't know why the Spirit led me to, to pray for, because we could have prayed for the legislature and the executive, but I heard rule of law. Rule of law. It says, I will restore thy judges as at the first, Amen. and thy counselors as at the beginning. Amen. Afterward, thou shalt be called the city righteousness. of righteousness, Amen. the faithful city. Amen. Remember that there is a prophecy that a time will come that. Nigeria is known for corruption, but we shall be known for what? Righteousness. But we see the key here. The key is that there must be a restoration of ju the judges first and counselors. Lift up your right hand. Say, Father, Father restore, our judges. restore our judges. Restore our counselors. Restore, our counselors. restore rule of law in Nigeria and the nations of the earth. Open your mouth and pray. Restore our judges. Righteous judges uproot evil judges, uproot corrupt judges, and lift and promote righteous judges. Restore counselors as at the beginning. Restore rule of law. 
May Nigeria be a land of rule of law. In the name of Jesus. Restore our judges as our defense. Our counselors, advisors, our technocrats. Restore. And we declare that this nation and the nations of the earth, Nigeria shall be known as the city of righteousness, the faithful city. In Jesus' mighty name. Please don't go. There's a testimony I want you to listen to. I called Sisu here so that your faith is strengthened. But before we do that, there is a group of people that need to call on the Lord tonight. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You call upon him for salvation. We never end a broadcast without giving you an opportunity to be saved. For what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world, to be blessed, to dance, to sweat, and have breakthroughs, and end up in hell? Tonight, you have an opportunity. He says, for whosoever, it doesn't matter who you are, what you've done, where you've been. The promise is for who? Whosoever. And all you need to do is call out from your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus came, he died, and he rose again. And if you believe that which he did on the cross, you will be saved. So raise your right hand, say with me, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I call upon you. I call upon you today. I come to you today. I acknowledge I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. Save me. Wash me in your blood. I confess you as my Savior, as my Lord. I forsake my sin. I accept in full the finished work on the cross and I declare that I am born again my sins are born again sorry my sins are forgiven and I am brand new in Jesus mighty name I have prayed lay your hands on your head father I declare everyone who has said that prayer saved to the uttermost on the authority of the word of God I declare their sins forgiven they are brand new in Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Now look to the screen. You will see a link. Hallelujah Challenge Life.com slash new convert. Or the barcode. If you scan the barcode, it will take you to that form. You need to fill the form. We have a special team that attends to this special group of people. We won't take your time. Just a few classes just to help you find your footing in your new found faith. Amen next we're going to you know give you the opportunity to to give to partner with us if you believe and think that god is doing great things through the hallelujah challenge and you want to be a part of it no coercion no 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 force no pressure but you feel steady in your heart to say pastor nathaniel we love what god is doing we want to support what you're doing we want to help you you know preach the gospel and and just fill the earth with the praise of God. Just go ahead, make use of the the link as well. You find a part for partnership. Just you know, go ahead and do what it says, and the Lord will bless you. Amen. Very quickly, before we say thank you to our partners, I'm going to invite Sisu. Now, how many of you heard me yesterday while we we're praying? Pastor Pat was praying, and the Spirit of God impressed strongly His name in my heart. And I said, let's pray for Sesu. How many of you remember? And I said, let's pray for Sesu. He's a member of our church. I don't know why. And we prayed and we sent the word of God. We, Thank we, you, Jesus. we spoke deliverance Thank you, Jesus. from destruction. Thank you, Jesus. This morning, Sesu called me and what he shared just blew my mind. So I'm going to ask him to come share very quickly. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir, for the opportunity. So I want to say these uh, three things. Um, God is we. God is everywhere. 
and God loves you. I don't know what you are going through. So that yesterday, I saw on the pastor's uh, Instagram that uh, Pastor Pat Akem is coming. So I don't want to like miss out the section. So I was in like from that 9 p.m. 9:30 p.m. to 10. So I and uh, three other guys they came and they, they said they want to go and get uh, food on the street. So I said, okay, let me just go with them so that I will use the opportunity not to sleep. So I went with them. When we got to the place, while waiting for the food, the I saw some guys who were smoking, and I was all okay with the smoke, so I just moved down a little, and uh, the next thing, I started feeling funny. I was the one that walked there by myself, and then nothing, no headache, nothing, but I started feeling funny. So I now told them that they should hurry up with the guys and uh, so that we can go. So we came back. That was after 10. We waited. I went inside. So I was, um, I sat down till 11. Then it was getting worse. And I said, okay, let me just lie down on the bed. And uh, that was that. I, then her life now started. So I joined. I couldn't hold my phone. I had to like drop the phone on the table. And the thing was not becoming worse. And I was inside the room alone. So I noticed I put my phone on the, on, the, um, pillow, on the pillow, and then it became worse. Like I was feeling this kind of a heavy, like they put a stone on my chest. And one heavy stone on my head, I could not even turn, even to even touch the phone that I dropped on the, on the pillow. So I was there. The network now later, my network not became bad, which I believe later that it was part of the plan that was got the network to be bad. So I, I joined the 12.45 when Pastor Pat Akeme I, I joined his uh, section. So 12.45, my network now went off. So as soon as the network went off, the thought now started coming to me that if you close your eyes now, you are going to die. You are not going to see tomorrow. So I remember praying a prayer point that I shall not die. And I prayed, I, I, I remember shouting, thank you, Jesus, for like three times. So I don't know when I slept off. That was from between uh, 2.45 to maybe 12.45, sorry, to the... So I, I got up around uh, 2.35. So I now, on the normal days, I don't touch my phone when I, like in the night. But just on the data, let me just go. The next thing... A member of the church sends me a WhatsApp text that personal, hey bro, personal prayed for you during the Halal Challenge. And I now send her a note. Okay, she now said, reach out to him. So I was like, this is 2 35. It's too late for me to reach out to personal. So I sleep, I went back to bed. Then I woke up by 4 30 again. And then I saw someone that's not a member of the church, but it's my, well, from where I stayed. She now sent me a text again that personal prayed for me. And I now asked her, so what was the prayer? So she now said to me that I should hold on. She will go back because I went through um, Instagram to even check the, 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 this. I couldn't find it. So she now went to YouTube and she cut off the part that personal that prayed for me and sent to me. And I was shocked. That was the same time I was struggling on the bed, like two. I couldn't even jump my leg. I could not even, my leg could not even jump up, touch the ground from the bed. The bed I went to, like, by myself, I couldn't even touch my phone, nothing, nothing. I was battling with my life. The same time, there were personal prayer for me, and it was exactly like, I was even joking with someone that this is the first time that personal even got my name correctly, like, the way he, like, so it's, 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 it, it, it can only be God. It can only be God. Hallelujah. The spirit of death came like a flood. When he told me, the exact time his data went off was when I jumped out here to say, let's pray for Sesu. That feeling was the spirit of death. And thank God that the Lord raised... You know, the Bible says, I sought for a man to stand in the gap. That's what we do at the Hallelujah Challenge. That's why I encourage people, don't joke. That's why I tell you, don't, don't, don't follow people who are arguing and criticizing us. Don't get distracted. Because what we do here is, we, we stand in the gap for the nations of the earth. 
and by extension i prophesy right now to anybody else under the yoke and, and, and rod of death that we send the word of god to effect deliverance in the name of the lord jesus in the name of the lord jesus in the name of the lord jesus for the bible says he sent his word and he healed them and delivered them from their destruction anyone anyone the bible says in psalm 79 verse 11 let the sign of the prisoners come to thee according unto the greatness of thy power preserve those who are appointed to die the same way he i mean how could i have left hallelujah challenge and heard that a member of our church was dead who was watching hallelujah challenge he walked himself to a place where he wanted to eat the, and the devil shot an arrow an arrow of death every arrow of death every spirit of death hovering around you every appointment with death is cancelled right now in the name of Jesus the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous run into him and they are saved we command deliverance for Jacob now in the name of Jesus our God is a God of salvation psalm 68 verse 20 and to him belongs issues of rescues from death father we give you thanks the god who sees us el roy the one who knows us we give you all the glory in jesus mighty name amen go to psalm 112 verse 3 quickly i was praying in the spirit in the morning and it was impressed upon my heart that one of the things that will happen in this edition that God is going to cause some wealthy kingdom people to rise in these last days for his name's sake. There are people who will say to me, Pastor Nathaniel, stop calling for partnership again. It's laid upon my heart to, to sort out all the bills. And the only reason why I will refuse is because we want to give people an opportunity to be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness shall endure forever. Father, I prophesy I declare that in this edition that you will raise wealthy and rich believers in the kingdom Amen. for the sake of the gospel. Amen. Your word says you give us power to get wealth. We release that grace, that power right now. Amen. Ideas and strategy for kingdom wealth. Let it be released right now. Amen. Let it be released right now. Amen in jesus name Amen. now when that happens this is what I, I was praying at home when that happens don't forget god i've worked with god a bit to see god raise people and, and those people have used that same wealth to fight god don't forget god don't forget your spouse don't forget those god used to bless you those three amen, amen. very quickly we want to thank our our partners we do this every day religiously. We, we are big on Thanksgiving. Simon Cooper, partners, our legal partners, show gear, technical partners, iFix, internet, carol films, movies, and, and um, videography, Evently, Premium Trust Bank, Zenith, Instagram, Facebook, Mixeller, and YouTube. Thank you for giving us this platform. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Let's take our journals and, and close and wave and prophesy over them. And by the way, that brother who sang this song, the Lord has done it finally. We've located him. So we, we, we feel that we should, we should honor him. and let, I mean, let, at least let people know that he's, this, he's the owner of the song. Amen. So we've sent a message to him. I think he'll be, he should be flying in from, from London, probably give him a, a few minutes to sing that song. As the original singer of that song. Amen. Amen. The Lord has done it finally. Finally. The Lord has done it finally. In the name of Jesus Christ. My God has done it The Lord has done it
trumpet just shout going to have my friend, Pastor Toby. He will be, we are calling tomorrow or tonight a Beniza night, a night of the help of God. So Friday night we rock here. Amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Team, let's give God thanks. Father, we thank you.